Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about, again, the principle of inclusion and exclusion, and we're going to do another basic example. So, um, if you're, you know, in, in the previous videos, we talked about, you know, sort of some, some a basic example, um, and then we proceeded from there to actually, you know, come up with what we thought was maybe a formula, and we actually proved that. So, if you're coming from this without, you know, having seen that proof or caring about any of that, you'll still be able to follow this video. So, um, maybe this formula doesn't exactly look familiar in that case, but again, you'll be able to follow what we're doing here. So, okay, let's look at a basic example. And in this case, we're going to deal with three sets. And in my next example, we're going to look at dealing with four sets. So, all right, so pretty basic example here. And I've written down a lot of stuff here just so you don't have to watch me write it all down. So, okay, so let's go through it real quick. So, among a group of students, 49 of those students studied mathematics, 37 studied chemistry, and 21 studied business. And if nine of these students studied math and chemistry, five studied, chem five studied chemistry and business, and four studied math and business, and likewise, three studied math, chemistry, and business, so three people studied all three subjects, we want to know how many students are in the group. And we're going to denote the set of students who studied mathematics, chemistry, and business by using the capital letters M for mathematics, C for chemistry, and B for business, respectively. So in the previous videos, we used notation like A1, A2, and A3 for our sets. So let's just use M, C, and B because it's a little more descriptive, I think. Okay, so one thing to notice, the number of students in the group, that's just going to be denoted by, again, the bars denoting the number or the cardinality. The cardinality of the set M, union C, union B, or again, in English to me, it says the number of students who are taking math or chemistry or business. All right, so what we saw previously, because we actually derived the, you know, the formula for, um, for finding the number when we had three sets. So to find the number of students taking math or chemistry or business, again, all we do is we take the number of students taking math plus the number taking chemistry plus the number taking business, and then we subtract. So then we look at all possible uh, intersections of two sets. So we've got math and chemistry. That would be one of them, uh, math and business, or chemistry and business. And then, again, we alternate our sign. And then we look at the intersection of all three sets, so math and chemistry and business. And just using our notation that we looked at in some previous videos and also just to make some notation, uh, just to reference that notation at the beginning, we could write that number of students taking math or chemistry or business as N1 minus N2 plus N3. Again, we're N1, we just add them up individually. N2, we add up the intersections of uh, two sets, uh, all possible intersections of two sets. And again, N3 would be the intersection of all three sets. So there's really not much to do in this case other than to just to compute. So let's see here. Let me go back and find our, find our numbers here. And then it's just going to be a bunch of arithmetic. So to compute this number, this number of students taking math or chemistry or business, again, we can just add them all together. So I don't know which one's easier to use. Let's use our notation down here, this N1, N2, and N3. So the number of students taking math, we said 49 students studied mathematics. So there's 49, so that's going to be the number of students taking mathematics. Plus the number of students, we said, taking chemistry. Well, that's just 37. Plus the number of students studying business, which we said is 21. So let's see here, um, 49 plus 37 plus 21, I'm going to do 49 plus 21 first because that would give us 70. 70 plus 37 would be 107. So again, that's our value for N1. N1 is going to be 107. And again, that's what we would compute right here. So it says this is going to be 107. Then we look at the number of students taking math and chemistry. So we said, uh, let's see. So. Nine of these students studied math and chemistry. So the number of students studying math and chemistry, that's just nine. Plus the number of students studying math and business. Um, let's see, I think I did those out of orders here. So I've got chemistry and business ne next, so be careful. But it says four studied math and business. So the number of students studying math and business was going to be four. 
And then we take the number of students studying chemistry and business. Well, five of the students studied chemistry and business. Okay, so 9 plus 4 plus 5, that's 9 plus 9, or 18. And lastly, we look at the number of students that studied all three, math and chemistry and business. Well, we said that three of those, there were three students that studied math and chemistry and business. So, three students there. So, so N2, that's going to be the value of the, uh, this expression in the parentheses. We said that was 18. So really we've got 107 minus 18 plus the number of students studying math and chemistry and business, which was 3. So let's see, if we do the arithmetic there, let's see, so 107, um, I, I always kind of look for an easier way to do it. So really we're just computing. Let's get one more piece of paper here. So the number of students studying math or chemistry or business, that's going to be 107 minus 18 plus 3. And again, in that notation that we saw at the very beginning, that's just going to be the same thing as N1 minus N2 plus N3. Let me uh, try not to mess up my arithmetic here because that's what I always do. So 107 plus 3, that would give us 110. And then we have to subtract away 18. Well, 110 minus 18, that's going to give us 92. So there are 92 students um, total who are studying math or chemistry or business. So again, we'll look at a four element uh, uh, scenario in the next example. And again, you're doing the same thing. You would look at the number of uh, all four sets individually. We'll then uh, look at all possible two set intersections. We'll add those together and then subtract that value. Then we'll add, we'll look at all possible three element intersections. And if you have four sets, there's going to be a few more of those in this case. And then again, we'll subtract away when we have all four, the intersection of all four sets. Well, there'll be a little bit more work in that one, but um, you'll see it's the exact same procedure.